Hey, what's up, Nerdgasm fans? Jerry here, aka Barnacles, and today we're doing our first 3D print on the new Robo 3D printer. Now, I only have a limited amount of blue material that's being given to us, so we have to print something very small. So I'm going to print this pumpkin over here. It's actually Grumpy Pumpkin from Thingiverse. And since he's in blue, maybe afterwards we'll give him a paint job. Do it. We'll see. Alright guys, well we unbox this printer, now it's time to print something on it. So here we have Grumpy Pumpkin from Thingiverse, and this is actually a really popular thing to 3D print because of the amount of detail that's involved in it. But because I had such a limited amount of sample material that came with the printer, and it couldn't use my existing 3mm stuff that I have all over the place, I have to wait for a shipment of new material. So I had to make sure that I printed something small enough that I had enough material with the sample that was included in the box. So I decided to take this pumpkin and scale it way down. And if you're thinking how big it is, if you can't tell from the video, it's slightly larger than a key on a keyboard is what I'm printing this thing at. And I'm printing a layer height of 0.15. And I kind of did this on purpose because I wanted to fit within the video. If I printed at a lesser layer height, that would have taken a lot longer to print than I could have done in one continuous recording. Um, and I wanted to do it in really high quality using my SLR. So here you can see we're cruising along. Uh, I increased the speed significantly on the video for the time lapse, but this print took about 45 minutes to complete start to finish. And uh, I believe the speed was set at 30 millimeters per second, which if you've seen my Ultimaker videos, the default print speed for the Ultimaker is around 50 millimeters per second. So this printer is quite a bit slower, but that being said, it does seem to do a really, really good job. And the heated bed is awesome because you can literally just stick right to the glass. And and that right there is awesome. And I don't have to mess with painter's tape anymore. I heat the bed up to 70 degrees C and it just sticks right down. And then when it's done, you just, the print's done. You wait about five, 10 minutes for the bed to cool down. And the part literally just pops right off. It didn't, it didn't stick at all. Literally, I just tapped it and it came right off the plate. And so that was really cool. Um, let's get to some of the pros and cons here. So some of the, the biggest con with this printer that I saw was the software. Uh, it, it depends on a bunch of software. I think it's Repeater or Repeteer or something like that. Uh, software Suite and Slicer, which are both like uh, publicly available software packages that are designed for all 3D printers. But because of that, they're so highly configurable, you have to go into a lot of menus and enter a lot of information to actually get the software like perfectly calibrated to the printer. That being said, once you go through that process, which is pretty well documented on their website, everything after that's fine and you never have to touch it again, which is which is completely awesome. On the Ultimaker, it was more of just a plug and play solution because of course they have their own software package that goes along with the deal called Cura. But I've also heard that Cura can be used with this printer too because you can just generate the G code from Cura and then just port it over into the other software package, click print and you're good to go. Um, there were things I did like about the new software package that I didn't have in Cura, and I, I liked having complete control over the printer. You could move all the axes, heat the bed, cool the bed down. You can do all that stuff right from the software. And you can do some of that stuff in Cura, but I just like the way that it was set up in the other software better. Uh, so actually for a printer that only costs about $700 retail, I think it's a hell of a deal, honestly. I mean, the Ultimaker costs more than twice that to get it assembled and sent to your house. And it is, don't get me wrong, the Ultimaker is a complete speed demon. I love that printer and I will never get rid of it. But if you're on a budget and, you know, you don't mind having to fiddle around with all the software settings and tweak a couple things and you're patient, this is a fantastic alternative. So you can see we just finished the print right there and it heads back to home and we're done. And here's what it looks like inside the software. All right, so there's the final product. You can see it's sitting right next to my Corsair M65 mouse, and you can get an idea just how tiny this little guy is. It's completely mind-blowing. And it did have a couple small little defects. Like, you can see a slight little blob off there in the lower left-hand corner, and that was because of some contamination on the material. Uh, basically, the tape left a little residue on it, and I couldn't get all the residue off, so it caused a couple little problems. But you can see it cleaned up once it got past that point really nicely. All right, well, obviously we can't have a blue pumpkin on Halloween. I mean, I'd, I'd seriously get tar and feathered. So here is a model painting kit I picked up from Joanne's Fabrics the other day. And uh, it's acrylic paint. I've never done anything with paint or anything like that, so please don't expect too much. But my goal was to get it kind of orange and uh, go from there. So here's our little guy. You can see, look, my thumb. The tip of my thumb is as big as this print. So this gives you an idea just how small of things you can print on this. Um, and you can even go smaller. If I was printing it, you know, 0 0.1 millimeters or, you know, or 0. Point, what is it, 0. Yeah, 0 0.1 millimeters, 
uh, I could probably print that thing and uh, get in half again as small and still have the same level of detail. So here we go, getting our orange paint on here. Uh, by the way, don't ever use a paper towel on your desk. I picked up the paper towel after I was done painting. And guess what? The whole desk was paint. But luckily for me, I had a bottle of acetone, so I was able to clean it up. All right, we're going to speed things up so you can see what's going on here. You can see I'm, I'm painting with the acrylic paint. And the acrylic paint, it's seeping in into all the little cracks and everything. And I'd imagine if you were a patient person, which I am not, um, and you had some primer, you could actually prime that thing with a brush and smooth it out completely, and it would look like a piece of glass. So when you 3D print, you do tend to get a little bit of a, a ri you know ridge on each layer. And depending on the resolution, that ridge is even is bigger or smaller. And at the resolution I was printing out, the ridge was, wasn't really that bad at all. But because I was printing something so tiny, it was really apparent. But you can fill it in easy enough with paint and primer. All right, so we're busting out the blow dryer because, like I said, I was incredibly impatient on this. And uh, and I realized because I didn't put any primer on at first, the paint just, it would have taken me hours to get this thing completely covered. So I decided to just call it good after these coats and blow dried it and then move on to the next step. All right, so now we got some green. Let's go ahead and paint our little stem. Now, the stem didn't turn out too good on this, and it was my fault, actually, because in the software, you have to set up the cooling so that it, it, it cools a little bit better when it's printing small things like that. That was a my bad. Um, if you own a 3D printer, you'll learn really quick all kinds of little tips and tricks to make everything a whole lot better. Uh, I didn't have a brush small enough. The model painting kit didn't even have a brush small enough for me to, like, really do good detail. So I apologize for this horrendous paint job, but I'm not going to lie. I actually like it. It's got a lot of character. It's already sitting outside waiting for the trick-or-treaters to catch it out of their corner of their eye sitting next to the door. <laughs> So there's the final guy up close. Uh, this is a macro shot to give you an idea, and you can tell it's it's actually pretty cool. And there it is sitting on my MacBook Pro 17, right next to where life started, where I actually had the model and I sized it and printed it out. So guys, I hope you really enjoyed this video. I hope it gave you a nerdgasm. This is an awesome new tool to add to the man cave. I'm going to put dual extrusion on the Ultimaker, and between that and this, I'm going to have two printers that are ridiculously good at doing different things. And if you're on a budget and you can't afford an Ultimaker, this is definitely another good printer that you should, you should absolutely consider. So if you guys have any questions, leave them down there in the comments. You guys know I'm a really responsive guy. Come follow me on Facebook and Twitter, and keep an eye out for more videos. Once I get more material, there's going to be a whole lot more videos coming your way. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like, favor, and subscribe. It helps me a bunch. Also, come follow me on Facebook and Twitter. I love interacting with you guys.